Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, welcome to my channel and welcome to the first installment of a video series I'm calling BCP and Me. So I'm doing these videos to raise awareness of BCP disease and the real world impacts it has on my life as well as those around me. So this disease is very rare with less than 500 known cases around the world. Uh, so without awareness, we will not be able to demonstrate uh, to the public the importance of a treatment. So today, I want to focus on the impact this disease has on walking. Walking is our primary mode of mobility. Our mobility is one of, if not the most important aspect of our lives when it comes to quality of life and our means of survival. This is why I wanna make my first video about how VCP has impacted my ability to walk. Many people I know may not realize that walking is very difficult for me. It is difficult to understand when I share pictures and videos of me riding my bike or doing other activities. I can only ride my bike because it's an e-bike, uh, it, which makes it much easier for me to pedal and go up hills where I wouldn't be able to ride a normal bike because of my, I just don't have the leg strength. Um, I used to be very active and I loved hiking, biking, boating, and many other outdoor activities. But my life has changed a lot since I was diagnosed with VCP and I can no longer do many of those activities without risking my safety or the safety of those around me. Um, but as this is my first video on VCP and its impacts, I want to give you a brief overview of what VCP is and its symptoms. I'll go over VCP disease in more detail in a future video, or you can check out curevcp.org. So many of you may be wondering, what is VCP disease? It is a rare adult onset genetic disease caused by one of several possible mutations in a gene called well, VCP, or velocin containing protein, otherwise known as P97. There are three main symptoms, including number one, inclusion body myopathy, uh, which is found in approximately 90% of VCP patients and is essentially just muscle weakness. Number two is Paget's disease of the bone, found in approximately 50% of VCP patients. The third is frontotemporal dementia, found in approximately 30% of VCP patients. ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease, can also be found in many VCP patients. And now on to the walking. Most everyone takes their ability to walk for granted. But not me and those like me with VCP or other diseases or disabilities. I have more strength in my legs than others I know with VCP, but that will change. I tend to have an easier time walking in the morning hours than I do in the evening. Walking on flat ground for 100 or 200 feet, like around the house, is normally no big deal. But longer walks or walking on uneven areas are more difficult, so that's when I need a cane or trekking poles. So here you can see I'm using a single cane walking Sarah, and my gait is kind of weird, and uh, I walk lopsided because I'm just using one cane. So here you'll notice I've switched to using a pair of trekking poles which the benefit of trekking poles is that it makes walking a full body workout and that you use the bottle, uh, muscles in your arms as well as your legs. The benefit is that I walk more upright, I have better balance and more control. The downside is that I lose the use of one hand as both of my hands have, uh, are occupied. However, even with the trekking poles, Walking is not easy, and I can't go the distance that, you know, I used to go. So here I am walking unassisted up my driveway in this very unflattering video. But as you'll notice, things get a little easier as it flattens out, and I walk up my ramp towards the front door. So with the single cane, I go up my driveway, which has a small incline, which is not easy as you can see. As I approach my steps, you can also see that the steps with the single cane are not easy. 
Now with a pair of trekking poles you can see that it is much easier to go up the grade in my driveway and then it is considerably easier going up the steps. So I've been suffering from muscle issues for you know well over 10 years but I thought it was nerve damage caused by a back injury. Uh, I only found out that it was actually VCP disease very recently. Most patients with VCP took years to be properly diagnosed. And for me, it was well over 10 years um, because the disease is so rare and most doctors don't, don't know what exists or what to look for. Many VCP patients have been previously misdiagnosed with other diseases such as uh, MS. Um, it can only be properly diagnosed with a genetic test because it's a genetic disease. Um, I will only get weaker over time without a treatment and I'll need a wheelchair at some point uh, but I'm going to put it off as long as possible but I don't know when that will be. Uh, I do know that VCP, uh, barring another act of nature, will eventually kill me. Um, I will be making another video to go more in depth about what VCP disease actually is and get into some of the science of it. Um, but my next video is going to be focusing on what I've done with our new house because we've recently moved, got a whole new house, and we've done some key things to uh, make it easier for me. Um, but, you know, aside from that, I would love to know what you guys think um, and anything that you want to know about VCP or my experiences with VCP. So please, Mark, uh, put your questions uh, in the comments. Uh, and then also just please like, uh, subscribe, and share. Thanks.